I was talking to someone the other day on YouTube and they were wondering um, about like my thyroid problems and let me see if I can find the conversation and I'll talk about that real fast. I know it's been a while since I've updated everybody but I just wanted to um, wait a little bit that way I would have um, enough information instead of just like a few little things. There's a YouTube user, I'll put his name down in the um, info box. Um, he said, um, "Do you have you had a thyroid ultrasound with power Doppler flow? You may either have inflammation that makes you hyperthyroiditis or Graves' disease. I think I saw some swelling on your neck in past videos but did not pay attention. And I said, I'm not sure if that's the ultrasound I had or not. I had a thyroid scan not long after that. Not long after I first found it. Um, at first they said cancer, and but possibly Graves' disease. So right now the test, right now to test the surgeon's theory, I'm taking with themazole and propyl thyroxyl. Sorry, I don't know how to say that one. That one's a really, really long name. Then I'm having more blood work done to see if it is Graves' disease. If it is, then they want to take it to be on the safe side, so the surgery seems like it's the safest option for me. I'll make another video soon explaining what all I've talked about with my doctors. I just wanted to wait a, wait a while so I could have more information. And then he said, thanks, not sure why someone su suspected cancer. Cancer is commonly found in hypothyroid patients. For a gross person, it has to have an, a percent uptake. Um, a high percent uptake, like 50% on the skin, and high TSI levels in the blood. Okay, so first I had my thyroid ultrasound. They said that they um, thought that I had a multinodular goiter. And then I went back, they did a thyroid scan. And Bruno said that I my levels were pretty abnormal, not extremely abnormal, but mine was actually at 50.1%. Um, Whenever they did the probe, whenever they rested the probe on my leg, um, they didn't look too out of the ordinary, but I actually saw, <laughs> I actually saw what it said on the screen whenever they held it against my neck. They were like, whoa, that's really, really up there. I started on the methemazole and the, uh, propyl thyrosyl. I think that's how you say it. Um, but... That is what my surgeon prescribed me for right now for the Graves' disease test. He wants to make sure that um, that is what it is because he can't um, operate without having some sort of proof that it's there. So um, my surgeon decided that it would probably, like he, whenever me and my mom went to the appointment, um, he, he was very, very kind, and he just sat there and explained everything to us, the good and bad of each option. Um, he said that with the regular anti-thyroid uh, medication like the beta blockers and everything else, they can help symptoms for a while, but with people with hyperthyroidism, about 80% of patients, once they take that medication for 12 to 18 months, they normally see problems return. Um, Maybe it's about 20 years down the road, or, you know, it, it just depends on how well it had worked for you. Um, he said that there are some cases where everything goes back to normal, but he was just like, you know, I, that just seems like a waste of money, and that's what me and my mom thought as well. That was immediately out of the question before we had even spoken to him about it. Um... The next option is the radioactive iodine treatment, where they just give you a really high dose of iodine, and it's supposed to almost like shock your thyroid back into regulation. And he he was just like, I would recommend that for someone who's like 50. He said, I don't recommend that for someone who has not had kids yet, who is still, you know, in their early stages of life, and, you know, who who's healthy, he's like, you know, because that can make problems arise later on, and it doesn't necessarily deal with the thyroid problems, um, he said that sometimes the issues can come back, but that's not very often, and he said that it can 
since it is a radioactive therapy, it exposes the local areas to your thyroid, like almost everything in your head and everything else, to radiation, and it can make you develop problems later on. He said it's almost like someone going into a CAT scan over and over and over and over again. And me and Mom were like, no. Because she asked if there was a link between her cousin having brain cancer and that cousin had had thyroid problems before and they had the radioactive iodine treatment. And she was wondering if there was a link between that and he said absolutely. Um, he was just like, you know, it's like you're getting constant x-rays or, you know, whether it's in small doses, you know, if you have enough, it can still make you have more problems later on. So we were just like, I don't really, I don't really feel comfortable with that. So, um, then we decided to, he explained surgery to us and, you know, he was just like, we could, we could do a biopsy on him, but you know, wh which one are we going to do it on the left, the right, the north, the south? And, you know, he, w he was just like, you know, we might as well just do a Graves disease test and see if it's cancer. Or not see if it's cancer, but see if it's that and then we can just take it. Um, he said he did not think it was cancer because on the um, thyroid scan and the iodine uptake test, um, the pictures from it, it just looked like liquid. And he said... Um, it would be a higher risk of cancer if they were, if they were solid, I think that's what he said. And, um, you know, he, he just thought, you know, there's no point in, you know, doing more tests or, you know, doing like a bunch more tests and having to biopsy. He said, and I'm not doing this just because I'm a surgeon. He was very, very kind with everything. He was very, very thorough with explaining everything. And mom and I have decided that surgery is the best option. So, yeah, that's pretty much my information with my thyroid. Um, I know I've only made, like, the one video about it, but I thought it was about time to update some people on it because I have had people asking questions. Um, and I hope I was able to provide more information for you guys with it. My palpitations have gotten really bad. Um, like... Normally, I only have like maybe one that's really bad that feels like I'm gonna hit the floor or have a heart attack or something else. I normally only have those maybe at most like three times a week, but on this past Tuesday, July 22nd, I had them three times, or no, I had them four times within about an hour and a half. Um, so that was not good. <laughs> um, I had one whenever I was talking to my doctor. Or no, I had one whenever I was on the way to the doctor, right before he pulled into the parking lot. I had one while I was talking to the doctor. And then I had one whenever I was having blood work done for the beginnings of the Graves' disease test. And then I had one whenever I was talking to my family about what the doctor had told us. So, yeah. It's not fun, but it's something that can be easily dealt with um, as long as you make sure to not miss any of your appointments or anything like that. Um, make sure you do get as much information as you possibly can um, because it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, hyperthyroidism patients at first, I know me and some other people that I've talked to um, at my workplace, customers that come in, they feel like they're going crazy because um, mine started with eating, eating stuff. I thought that, you know, maybe I had gall gallbladder problems because my mom had them whenever she was a little older than me, whenever she's like 26 or something like that. And, um, you know, it was any time I ate something that was kind of greasy or anything like that, it just almost made me violently ill, but I never got sick. Um, and it just absolutely was driving me crazy because, you know, I would just get really, really dizzy and almost pass out and get really hot and start shaking really violently like this all over my body and it's really scary and you know your heart's pounding and pounding and pounding and racing and you have no idea what's going on with your body you have no idea how to regain control and I mean it's really frustrating and really really emotional I know I was so scared whenever all this started happening and then as soon as I started finding out more information you know I started looking it up and everybody says don't do that but um, whenever I did, I was actually able to ask my doctor more questions, 
and everything else and it made things a lot easier on me because I went in with some sort of knowledge and it helps you determine a better treatment option um, of course I wouldn't trust everything you read online I would try to ask your doctor about some of that stuff um, because I've had my doctors you know I'll ask them a question and they'll be like well you know that isn't necessarily true when you know stuff like that but um, you do need to go at it with an open mind um, maybe surgery isn't right for you he um, he just explained some stuff and it, it made me feel a lot more comfortable with it going in to all of this with more information um, <laughs> but yeah if you guys want to ask me any more questions about it that would be absolutely awesome and I would have no problem answering till next time